Hi there, we're going to evaluate the limit of sine of x over x as x goes to infinity using the squeeze theorem. Now, what do you think this limit is? Well, sine of x just goes between 1 and negative 1, and it's being divided by x, which is getting really big, so you probably imagine the limit is 0, which is correct. And that's what the graph suggests as well. As x gets really, really big, sine of x over x goes to 0. And if x were going to negative infinity, again, the limit would be 0. And the proof of that is almost exactly the same as what we're going through today. So I'll leave that as an exercise for you to try if you're interested. Now, why would we suspect that we should use the squeeze theorem in the first place? Well, sine of x is already squeezed between negative 1 and 1. And any number divided by infinity, so to speak, is equal to zero. So it should be pretty easy to squeeze this function in between two other functions that will be approaching zero. Since the squeeze theorem is based on inequalities, we should start off with the inequality that we know. Sine of x is less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to negative 1. Again, it's squeezed between these numbers, which is why the squeeze theorem is often useful with sine and cosine limits. Of course, here we've got sine involved, but sine is not actually the function we're interested in. We're interested in the function sine of x over x. So how do we get sine of x over x involved in our inequality? All we've got to do is divide everything by x. Dividing everything by x leaves us here. Negative 1 divided by x is less than or equal to sine of x divided by x, that's the function we're interested in, is less than or equal to 1 divided by x. And you may wonder if we run into any problems because maybe x is negative, so maybe we'd have to reverse the inequality. But we don't have to worry about that. Since x is approaching positive infinity, we can assume x is positive. And so there aren't any complications with dividing everything by x. Now to finish off with the squeeze theorem, all we have to do is evaluate the limits of the functions on the left and the right. If the limits are the same, then we have the limit of the thing in the middle because it's squeezed between the two limits on the ends. So what's the limit of negative 1 over x as x approaches infinity? It is, of course, just 0. It's negative 1 divided by a really big number. What about the function on the right, 1 over x? What's the limit of 1 over x as x goes to infinity? It is, similarly, 0. So since the limits of the left and the right functions are the same, they're both zero, we can use the squeeze theorem to conclude that our function, which is squeezed in between negative 1 over x and 1 over x, our function sine of x over x by the squeeze theorem must have a limit of zero as x goes to infinity, since it's squeezed between two functions that also approach zero. Hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll leave some links in the description to other relevant lessons with similar limit problems and that sort of thing.